And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Wherever you have to go, just get away. Because there's no fixing this. I knew this was going to happen. Everybody. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you to the subscribers. Welcome all new subscribers. We got a little bit of a jump there. We appreciate you guys joining us. Um, hopefully you like our channel. We um, Some people were asking when uh, do we upload. We upload every uh, Wednesday and Friday at 2 p.m. I know some of you guys are asking for more shows too. You know, you guys um, schedule wise, this is really what we can handle right now. Um, hopefully in the future near future that we'll be able to do more shows per week but right now this is how we, get, we both I wouldn't mind doing it every day every day or at least five days but it's just too much yeah because yes. well, we both we work work yeah and um a lot so it, you know it kind of like takes up time so this is like the time we can like record on Mondays is like the time that we can record and then you know get things out to you guys but but yeah but thank you guys for joining us we appreciate it um, I know a lot of the jump happened from the Chris Rock video mm -hmm. and it was so funny because in the Chris Rock video a lot of you guys were like um, that you didn't like you were not upset but you guys didn't like that I censored what Chris was saying I, I mm -hmm. saw this comment re repeatedly you know um, that, you know, because we censored some of the cussing that he was saying, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll take the hit on this one because Kara actually was going to be okay with keeping it in. But then I had made a last minute decision because I realized that we were under the warning mm -hmm. thing. I thought, oh man, I forgot about that. When I was editing, mm -hmm. I realized we were. But, um, but yeah, you guys, here's the thing is that right now, so YouTube has taken a couple of our videos down. And because of that, we are officially like on a warning right now with YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we don't want the channel to get taken down. Or we don't. We don't want to get put in YouTube jail or demonetized or whatever it is because it's really annoying. Over cuss words. Yeah, over cuss words. We really don't think that it was kind of necessary, which I understand because a lot of people were like, "What about the First Amendment?" I love you. I'm like, I'm like, I completely agree with you. Every time y'all was saying that, I was like, I agree with you 100. percent I mean, the First Amendment is under attack. It is because there's a Clearly. lot of things you just can't say. Say, you know what I mean anymore. Sometimes right. we don't even know what we're violating. It's just that, you know, the videos that have gotten taken down, we didn't think they were even under a violation. But mm -hmm. it is very frustrating to get a video taken down and now to be on official warning. We just don't mm -hmm. want to take the risk of, you know, them just taking our video down. You know, we don't, I know because I know like our channel, we don't have like the, the best like quality visual um, video we don't and um, the audios even probably even worse mm -hmm. but we still put a lot of effort into the videos is mm -hmm. the thing you know what I mean even though we need to upgrade some stuff we put a lot of effort into the conversations we talk about and things we really want to get the information out there and um, you know we spend a lot of time doing this and then editing it and all that stuff and making sure nothing's copywritten and then finding clips and then finding if we mention data we got to put that up you know like, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and um, it's just, it's really annoying when you do all of that, upload the video, and they take it down. It is, it's the most annoying thing. So we just thought that we would just, you know, like, just n not risk it. Plus, Chris was saying, I mean, it's okay to cuss every once in a while. It's not a big deal. But that was a string of cussing, one. Mm -hmm. And two, the, the, what he was saying was very vulgar, mm -hmm. I guess you can say. So, you know, that's why we did that. But we do agree with you. And Carrie, you're right. This, the First Amendment is under attack, clearly. Mm -hmm. They're taking our videos down. People who have yeah. conservative voices are seem to be the one this is happening with. So, I just want to keep it kind of clean, as clean as possible, while still telling the truth. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm going to read an email that we got, and then we'll kind of get into this video here. Okay. So, it says, Hi, ladies. I really like your channel. You two tackle some tough topics. We need more of that these days. I watched the video of Scott Adams telling white people to stay away from black people. I'm a white woman that fully supports helping with the injustices that happen towards black people. When I listen to Scott, I sense some frustration he has towards a lot of black people not acknowledging white allies. Uh, while I don't share his same sentiments in saying stay away from black people, um, I do sometimes feel even when I try to help, for lack of a better word, uh, the black community, it seems many still view me as inherently racist. 
My question is, do you think it's pointless for white people to help black people? What do you think overall about what Scott said? I'm not going to lie. I am really uncomfortable even writing this in hopes that you don't take it the wrong way. Um, have a good day. And her name is Elle. I love her name. Elle. I love her name, Elle. 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 Elle's like, a pretty if I ever had a daughter, I'd name her Elle or Ella. It's a pretty yeah. name. So, yeah. So, Elle, we're going to um, look at Scott Adams, um, the, the video. that He's a cartoonist, I believe. I can't mm -hmm. believe I remember what Vat Magazine's were, but he's a cartoonist for all time. For Dilbert or... Dilbert. Dilbert, yeah. I think is the name of the cartoon. It's a, it's a famous one. I've seen it. I've seen it before. Um, but, so we're gonna look at the video. If, you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't wanna have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get away. Get, where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. All right, this can't be fixed. You just have to escape. So that's what I did. I went to a neighborhood where, you know, I have a very low black population. Because unfortunately, there, you know, there's a high correlation between the density. And this is according to Don Lemon, by the way. Um, so here I'm just quoting Don Lemon. When, when he notes that the, when he lived in a uh, mostly black neighborhood, there were a bunch of problems that he didn't see in white neighborhoods. So even Don Lemon sees a big difference in your own quality of living based on where you live and who's there. So I, I think it makes no sense whatsoever as a uh, white citizen of America to try to help black citizens anymore. It doesn't make sense. It's no longer a rational impulse. And so I'm, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to back off from being helpful to black America because it doesn't seem like it pays off. Like I've been doing it all my life, and I've been, the only outcome is I, be, I get called a racist. That's the only outcome. <laughs> it makes no sense to help black Americans if you're white. Uh, the, the, it's over. Don't don't even think it's worth trying. Totally not. And there we go. You didn't expect that today, did you? <laughs> but those who don't want to focus on education, you just need to get away from them. Just get as much distance as you can. That's my recommendation. Um, and I'm also really sick of seeing video after video of black Americans beating up non-black citizens. Um, you know, I realize it's anecdotal and it, you know, it doesn't give me a, a full picture of what's happening. But every damn day I look on social media and there's some black person beating the of some white person. I'm kind of over it. I'm over it. Right? So I, I quit. What's interesting is we said this a long time ago that this is going to happen. And then Kara said this, uh, reiterated this not too long ago. And I did I, like three times. Yeah, but a long time ago we said this, that this is going to end up happening where all these white, I guess you say allies, they say, are going to start getting sick of helping black people when black people all they do is say that white people are racist, the country's racist, the oppressor's the white man. You know, eventually, eventually they're going to um, uh, walk away. You know, and um, I don't know if people like if you guys care about that, but it seems like, um, you know, like what he's saying is exactly what we always have said. And Kara just reiterated this mm -hmm. not too long ago in a video that is just looking at how black people are with white people and the the verbiage that they use. It's like, like even L, you know, she's saying she wants to be a black ally or she is one and she's, you know, you guys are out there. Here are the things that white people are out there marching for the causes, right? You're over here, you know, helping with schools and things like that. All these things to help the black community just to turn around and call, like you said, a racist. Now, I've heard this a million times from white people where it seems like anytime we help, we still get called racist, right? And I mean, I don't, I don't know. I feel like Scott is frustrated. He said all his life, mm -hmm. all of his life he's been 
basically. He's been there for, you know, to help black people um, expose injustices that happen with black people, you know, and um, just to turn around and call it racist. And I, I knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I knew this was going to happen. And, you know, like, I'm not surprised. I mean, again, I mean, even Bill Maher mm -hmm. is now the, I mean, I believe he's a liberal. Yeah, he is. He, he is. I think he's got. I said is though good. before, there's going to be a certain point in time where these liberal white people are going to get mm -hmm. sick of helping and helping and helping and still being caught racist. Uh, no. You know what I mean? Still, still What's making that? an effort to march mm -hmm. and, and help black people. And and by the way, we don't need help. Mm -hmm. We need to lift ourselves up. Yeah. Right. Why do we always we need a think, leader? I don't. We don't need. I mean, look. What is this mm -hmm. ally thing? What is it? You know what I mean? Like all these groups, we need male allies for the women's movement. We need straight allies for mm -hmm. the gay movement. Right. We need white allies for BLM. You know what I mean? No. What you need to do is to grow up. And take responsibility and take for responsibility. Your, your life. And this is what happens when you t take self-responsibility mm -hmm. away from a group of people. Mm -hmm. They start thinking they can attack someone. What he's talking about about the white kids, I think mm -hmm. Jason Whitlock showed a long, mm -hmm. long, um, like... Compilation, compilation yeah. of white kids who are now getting beat up at school by black kids in bathrooms mm -hmm. and things like that be and, and because they feel like they can. Yeah. And nothing it's really happens to these kids. I mean, it, it's pretty astonishing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's not right. Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's right. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's, it's, it, it, there's this thing where um, there's this girl I, she's been going kind of viral too she's like a she looks like a college student she's mm -hmm. a light skinned chick with a lot of mm -hmm. colorful hair mm -hmm. and she's in her car calling white people racist and that you have to call you have to call yourself a racist um, even though you're an ally and, and all of this and she's going on and on and on <laughs> and this is what he's talking about yeah. so do I think that he should stay away from black people if he wants I mean look yeah, I, mean, I don't care country. that black people don't want to be around white people either but yeah. no one's calling them racist right you know what I mean it's just like I see his his point you know what I mean it's like yeah. what are you going to keep what 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 is right where what, what is the payoff is my point there I think it's yeah. his point it's like what mm -hmm. is it that America has to do for mm -hmm. our race mm -hmm. for us to cut it out with all of this you know what I mean it's just like he's right it'll mm -hmm. never end and the reason why I think that is because I think there are people mm -hmm. that don't want it to end yeah, there's, there like is it. a lot of power mm -hmm. and money to be gained with r the racist rhetoric. Mm -hmm. The oppression rhetoric. The oppression that, Olympics yeah. is big in this country. Yeah. To be a victim is such a powerful thing these days. It, mm -hmm. Black people are at the top of it. I would even say you LGBT know. might be on top of us now. Yeah. But, but we're like, trying to stay we're trying to stay alive with the with the oppression. You know, you know, you know we have Colin Kaepernick, you know, who's wrote a book, a comic is what he's made, about his family. Spreading a message of empowerment in his new graphic novel, Change the Game. It's his true high school coming of age story, his journey embracing his blackness, despite resistance from many, including his white adoptive parents. I know my parents love me, but there were still very problematic things that I went through. I think it was important to show that, no, this can happen in your own home, and how we move forward collectively while addressing the racism that is being perpetuated. He took cues from his icon, basketball star Allen Iverson, who he said wore his blackness like a suit of armor. And teenage Kaepernick wanted cornrows to match. He's getting what roles, his mom asked? Oh, your hair's not professional. Oh, you look like a little thug. Your mom Become. said that to you? Yeah. A white family that took the time out to raise him and gave him a good life, and he's over here calling them racist. A big, he's making money off of Right, and he's not even, he's not even 100%, but I think he's, his father, his natural father is black and his natural mother's white. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. didn't want to raise him. So a white right. family who already had a family raised him, and now he's calling them yeah. racist. It's like, I think there's white people that are, this black ally thing is so weird. Like, I'm not, I'm not getting on you, L, but I feel like, I think there's things you have to understand a little bit. A lot of black people right now are being irresponsible. And so when you're trying to be this ally um, for irresponsible people, really irresponsible people, it makes them double down on the oppression stuff. 
and it makes them feel more entitled to just continue the behavior. So I'm not sure, because I, th I think there's a lot of white people who are genuinely feel that they're helping the black community by talking about, you know, George Floyd stuff. And then there's white people who are just doing that and saying that and being on the black side because they are trying to be social justice warriors, right? They just want to have a cause, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just a way to make you feel good as a white person. Not saying you, but, you know as a white person. But there are some out here that are really trying to, like this guy, trying to really be like a, you know, just call out the injustices and stuff, and he still gets called racist. So there is no payoff for white people that do this. I think this is a, this is a black issue. You have to also understand this is not just about black people being, you know, uh, done wrong by white people. Black people are doing wrong by black people. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to march for the George Floyds and the, the police shootings and all this, then you need to go, you know, to Chicago and, and, and march with those, you know, the gang members that are killing each other and terrorizing their own neighborhoods. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just, it can't just be, we've created this world where we're just seeing this part where white people are beating up and killing black people and then no one's talking about the other part where black people are literally killing each other on a daily basis at astonishing rates nuclear speed you know and it's like we get to people like like him that are just like well you know i was trying to help i was trying to be on the side i was trying to call out some of the stuff but i still get what's the point there's a lot of problems going on within the community. And I'm, it's my belief that you can't fix, other people can't fix our community. We have to fix our community. You know, we have to, it has to be within. But another problem I think there is is that if we just look at ourselves all as individuals and American, then you're responsible for your behavior. But for some reason, with black people, it's that we have, we have to have a leader. You know what I mean? We're just we're just separate from our country. We just, we don't want to be part of that. Yeah, I mean I'm nobody's ally. Yeah, what I'm does sorry. that mean? I, I will speak up when something's wrong. Yeah, like, I talk about men's rights all the time. Yeah. The reason why is not because I'm some ally to men. It's because it's, it's just, wrong. It's wrong. The thing <laughs> they're saying is just wrong. If if a, if a gay person gets beat up in an alley because they're simply gay, that's wrong. That's wrong. That doesn't mean I'm an ally. That just means that this is this situation here is not right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm willing to call that out. Transing the kids in school and all of that is not right. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about that. You know what I mean? If, you know what I mean? So to me, it's just like all of this, this ally stuff has really messed it up. Yeah. Added power yeah. to a power structure that's using mm -hmm. us against each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are several. What he's saying is, I'm not saying that what he's saying, like, stay away from black people. Because there are certainly black That's people extreme. who don't think that way. And yeah. I don't think that he truly... No, I, I, I think, think what, what yeah. he's talking yeah. about are black people yeah. that just can't get mm -hmm. over themselves. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little annoyed with those black people too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, Elsa, she says in fresh. Elsa, I sense that he has frustration. Yes. And, and that's my sense too. I feel he has frustration towards the community. Because he's over here probably marching. And even if we go back to the 50s and 60s where, where white people could mm -hmm. openly call us the N-word, mm -hmm. you know, why can't we understand that they were also brainwashed? Yeah. A group of people who were mm -hmm. made to believe a certain thing mm -hmm. about, about certain another race because for some reason... They have different skin, skin pigmentation. Me, me and Danielle are reading um, Up From Slavery Yeah. Um, with... Um, Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington. And, you know, he talks, he was slave. Mm -hmm. So he talks about the fact, extensively, extensively, that, you know, the the way black people felt about white people. And, you know what I mean, in those days. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather hear it from the horse's mouth. A person who was dur here during mm -hmm. Reconstruction, a person who um, dealt with the KKK, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, that's it. and even those black people mm -hmm. had some sort of empathy on white people, because mm -hmm. they realized those white people were um, brainwashed. Mm -hmm just like they were to be slaves. Yeah.